We're here at the Phasing Tipton Saratoga Yearling Sale talking with Mark Taylor with Taylor Made Sales Agency. Uh, Mark, this is the last year that we're going to see Unbridled Song Yearlings and you're offering a couple in the sale. Uh, talk about that, uh, kind of what it means to, to your operation uh, to see this last crop go through. Well, it's bittersweet. Um, you know, we're grateful that we have one more crop. Um, in that last year that he bred, he actually had a little foot abscess behind and he missed a couple weeks of the season. We weren't sure if we were going to get him back breeding again. He did. He was able to finish the, the rest of the season, but it wasn't a full crop that he bred. So not only is it the last crop, but it's a little bit of an abbreviated crop. Um, but just to see him come and go through our operation, you know, we had him when he was a foal. Um, he was ultimately bought privately and then he sold again at Saratoga. We got him back at our farm. He laid up for a few months before going to the two-year-old sale. We sold him in one of the few two-year-old consignments we ever had. So it was like it was our destiny to be hooked up with this horse. No matter how many times we tried to sell him for somebody, he kept coming back. And it was just a great ride with him. He was, he was such a cool horse. Just uh, emotionally, he, he, there was just a big attachment there. He was like the tailor-made brand. And he was a great commercial horse. Uh, a lot of our clients made a lot of money breeding to him. And he was a great racehorse sire, you know. And um, there were uh, there were just so many good horses he produced over the years. I mean, it just grade one winner after grade one winner. And he was just, he was so consistent. And every time you thought he might be hitting a lull, here he would come with another brilliant horse. And they not only could run, but it was visually uh, just uh, magnetic when you would see him run. Like when s somebody couldn't help themselves. When they would see an unbridled song, then they'd see those horses run on Saturday afternoon. They just had to have another one. So it's sad to see, you know, it coming to the end of an era, but it's exciting because we've got a lot of unbridled song mares on the farm. A lot of our clients have really invested in that. And I think what you're seeing in the results is he adds that size and scope that a lot of these stallions need, and his daughters are just absolutely slaying it. I mean, he's doing just super. And I think we're going to see the, the best still to come with his sons. I mean, we're extremely high on Gradar, who we have at our, at our farm, and also I'm very high on We'll Take Charge. Um, very high on cross traffic that Wayne Hughes has. He, we sold him as a yearling. And we also sold Liam's map, who runs this afternoon in the Whitney, that I think is a very, very freakish kind of racehorse. So I think he's got four sons out there that could kind of finalize his legacy. Um, and uh, you look at a horse like Galileo, he didn't really have a son hit till, um, uh, or Sadler's Wells, excuse me, till, till the end. And then he came up with some really good sons. So I think, I think Unbridled Song is going to follow that same pattern. And, um, and he's going to be a big influence on the breed for, for many, many years. And, and we're just happy to have been a part of it. And we're very grateful for everybody that's helped us, all the breeders, all the owners, people that have bought all the yearlings off of us. And then, um, you know, just getting the horse to begin with. So, you know, we're, we're, very, we're very excited. Well, very good. Mark, thanks for sharing your thoughts on Unbridled okay. Song with us. We all look forward to watching his legacy unfold. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Good luck with the sale. Okay, bye-bye.